All right, so at the end of the last video, we just brought our sketch into Photoshop and we chose the right sizes. So I'm going to review that by going back in my history to before I change the size. So the first step, you bring your sketch in. There it is. The first step is to crop it down. So I'm going to use the crop tool right there. I'm going to make sure all my settings are cleared out. Otherwise, it's going to limit how I can crop it. And I'm going to go just to the outside edges of my sketch. Because this will be the blueprint for my collage. Then I hit return. Now I'm going to go to image size. If you don't see rulers, you can always hit command R to get your rulers. And you want your rulers to be in inches. And if they're not in inches, you can go to Photoshop preferences, units and rulers, and set them to be in inches. Okay. Right now, four inches by three inches is not gonna do it. And it's not only that, it's only 72 pixels per inch, which I can see on the bottom edge. So I need to go to image size, image, image size, and I need to grow it to be full print resolution in this lab. So I'm gonna take my smallest dimension and make that 11 inches. And because this lock is activated, that's gonna automatically change the width so its proportions don't change. And I'm gonna have resample checked, which will allow it to grow pixels instead of just rearrange the the resolution and I'm going to change the resolution from screen resolution to 350 which is what I call our arts lab resolution once I do that it's going to look very blurry but then I hit command 0 to fit it all on the screen and now it's 11 inches by almost 16 inches we want to aim for 11 by 14 by 350, something around there. Now I'm going to create a new layer because I want a background. I want a desk in order to, to build this collage. And then I'm going to drag that new layer underneath my sketch. And then I'm going to go to image canvas size. And I'm going to grow around my image. And I'm going to make it 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. I do that because it will give me enough space, but it's also, it's good for future artists to know this because that's the largest print size for a professional four color offset lithography press, which is how things are professionally printed, like movie posters, banners, business cards, all of them are printed on 30 by 40 sheets that are then cut down. The only thing that's printed larger than that are inkjet billboards, <laughs> which, run on big bicycle chains and is a different process. But digital artists design those too. All right, now we've got this big open space. Remember, you can always hit Command-0 to fit it in. I can get off of the crop tool. And now with this background layer, which is just an empty grid right now, I'm going to say Edit Fill, not with white, but with 50% gray. This shows me that this is kind of a working space and it makes it, it's a nice, nice neutral mid-tone to cut things out on. Yes, so this background size, I made it, I used canvas size. Go back before I did the canvas size. So I'd already resized the image itself that's cropped down to my sketch to be at least 11 by 14 by 350. Next, I created a new layer by using the little post-it icon. You could also go to layer, new layer. I put that layer underneath my sketch. And now I'm gonna grow the background by going to image canvas size and choosing a width that's 40 inches and a height that's 30 inches. So make sure it says inches here, not pixels. 40 pixels by 30 pixels is very different than uh, inches. Okay, then I get this. It's 40 by 30 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Now I'm going to click on that background layer 
and I'm going to go to edit at the top and fill. This is a, a very uniform way to do the paint bucket. And I'm going to choose from the drop down of the contents, I'm going to choose 50% gray. And then I turn my sketch on. Just like we did with our emoji screen grab, I'm going to lock both of these just so they don't get disturbed. Mm -hmm. So you want 50% gray. Yep, so edit, fill, and where it says contents, you'll have a drop down and you'll choose 50% gray. Opacity will always be 100% when we do this, and mode will always be normal. All right. All right, now that I've got my space and my sketch, I can start bringing in my reference images. And to make this a little bit easier, compositing is all about layers. So I'm going to go ahead and swoop all of my coloring options into this uh, sideline bar. So mostly just what I have are my layers right here. So I can see them all very clearly. Okay, now I'm going to build from the background forward. So I'm going to build from the setting sun. I'm going to drop that in. It's going to come in in the middle. And just because I had the, the gray layer behind my sketch <laughs> selected, it's hidden. But I can swoop it out and move it above my locked layers. Now, when you bring it in, it's going to show you its, its native resolution. So this is the size that that file is, which is about the perfect size. And then immediately, I can hit Command-T, and I can transform it. Let's just do a basic flipping of it. So that's basically how I'm going to use it, right there. But I don't want to place it there quite yet. I'm just going to set it off to the side. And it's going to come in as a smart object. Just leave it as a smart object for now. What's in front of that? Well, it's the high mountains. And what are the ones I'm pretty sure I want to use? All three of these. So let's bring these in. Bring them in. They're plenty big. I can shrink them a little bit. Remember, they're still smart objects. So I'm not losing any quality until I rasterize them. And I'll move that over here. So I have my setting sun. You can tuck them off the corner too. And I have my high, my high mountain. Let's have some other high mountains. Sometimes they'll come in a lot bigger than you need. And you can just quickly place them a little smaller. I think that might be my focal point mountain there. I'm just keeping them all as smart objects right now. I haven't cut out from them yet. And then I was thinking I might want to use this, this fortress as well. That would be smaller. It would be off to the, to the other side. I'll go ahead and put it right there. Hit return. OK, now what's in front of that? Well, it's the hillside. And this was, I had two that I was interested in. I think this one. Notice how this one's way bigger than I need. Much better to be bigger than you need than too small. I'll put that up here. And the other hillside I was thinking about was this one. I liked the foreground element that already gave me. And I think I can blend those two together. And that foreground's already about the right size. So Pixabay, really nice. An average of around 3,000 pixels allows us to print way beyond 8 by 10. But as long as we can do at least 8 by 10, we're in good shape. And then this was, this was kind of a, a medium one that I thought I might use, this mountain range. Notice this one's actually a little bit smaller. And I'm not going to grow it because that would lose resolution. So I keep things at their native resolution to begin with. Now in front of that, plants and rocks, I just wanted to use this. 
This gives me a foreground element, but this is also a foreground element I'm pretty interested in using. I can shrink it a little bit. Maybe I want to flip it. I can right click and flip it horizontally while still keeping a smart object. Yeah, so something like that I think might work. All right. Almost there, I already have way more than five. Then we want the tall tree. And I was thinking of using this. It is cut off at the top, but so it so is it in my composition, and I'm gonna probably trim these branches. So I want it about that size. Tuck that down there. And then some of the other things, I was thinking maybe for a foreground element, I don't know. Maybe for a foreground element, I'm not sure. Let's keep that there in reserve. And then lastly, plants, rocks, etc. I already did that. Let's see, what else? I think that's everything. Now I might need to augment and put more in there if I need to. And I can definitely change color and lighting. But now we're going to start putting it all onto our image. So the only one I don't need to cut out from is my furthest background image. So the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and take that sky. I'm going to Command T and really stretch it across my whole image. And the only thing that's frustrating about this is how close that sun is to the edge. And I'm going to put the sky pretty high, and I'll put it right there. And so I'm going to do a little, a little trick here. I'm going to rasterize it. And then I'm going to use my lasso tool, just overlapping with the image slightly. I'm going to select the area I wish was there on the image. And then I'm going to fill that lasso area just like I filled the gray background. I'm going to say Edit Fill. But this time, instead of filling it with 50% gray, I'm going to say fill it with content aware. So content aware is an algorithm within Photoshop that samples pixels around your selection and tries to fill it with something that matches. So the most basic way that they demonstrate this is that you have a brick wall with graffiti on it and you want the graffiti gone. So you lasso around the graffiti and then you fill it with content aware and it sees enough clear brick that it knows to fill it in with that pattern. We're going to do it at 100%. And let's see what we get, because I just need a little bit more sky, because I don't want the cloud right on the edge of my composition. So this is using the computer to kind of think through it. And so it gives me a little bit more sky. It also gives me a second sun, but I can adjust that later. But that does give me a nice transition in the sky, at least. All right. All right. So that's one layer. That's good to go. That's my background. Next, I can uh, dim it for the moment at like 50%, and I can lock it so I can see my sketch underneath. Or I could do the trick that we did for our emojis, and I can duplicate my sketch with Command J, move it on top of everything, and then just turn its opacity way down. Because all I need is the sketch to kind of tell me where things go. So I'm going to turn it to about 30% opacity, and then I'm going to lock it. OK, next are the high mountains. The high mountains I need to start cutting out a little bit. So I have this. And if those high mountains